Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at TP-Link EAP225 Outdoor. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. We also have a Discord channel. I'll put the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have an Amazon storefront. So like always, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get this unboxed, then we'll go over some of the specs, and then I'm gonna install this in my backyard temporarily with just a Cat 5e cable. So this is all that comes in the box with the TP-Link EAP225 Outdoor. So we have our one access point, we have our two antennas that will attach on the top of this access point. It comes with a couple zip ties to zip tie the access point up. We have our PoE injector if you're not using a PoE switch. We have the mounting bracket for the access point, the power cord, and some screws and anchors. So now that we've seen what comes in the box, let's take a look at some of the specs. So this access point is weatherproof, so we could have this outdoor. It has up to 1200 megabits per second with 2x2 MIMO technology. It has mesh technology capabilities, and I'll actually show you guys that when we do this install. So this one access point will be going in my backyard, and I have another one of these, which I'll put in my front yard, connect it with a PoE injector, and then we'll mesh the two together. It supports seamless roaming. It has high transmission power and high gain antennas. Our guests could authenticate through a captive portal if we wanna set that up. We won't be setting that up in this video, um, but I will show you in another video how to do that. And this access point is powered by 802.af passive PoE. So here's our access point mounted onto our fence. We have a temporary cable running on the ground back to our network room. Um, this is temporary, like I said, I'm gonna be taking it down after this video. Uh, let's go take a look at the one that we're gonna be meshing to the front. And this is the access point that will be meshed back to the other one in our Amada controller. Um, so we should test this to see how it works in the speed test. Now you guys have seen where both of the access points were mounted. The one in the backyard is hard cabled back to our TP link switch. So the first thing we need to do, we need to adopt the first EAP 225 that is hard wired into the switch. So right now we can see it's pending and we're gonna press adopt. Upon further discovery, I found out that the access point that I took from a client's is an EAP 110 outdoor. That access point doesn't allow meshing, so I won't be able to show the mesh functionalities. I will end up buying another EAP 225 outdoor to show you guys the mesh. Right now, the EAP 110 is just hardwired into my switch. So they've both been adopted and we'll take a look at the EAP 225. On the top, we could see that it's on channel 11 in the 2.4 gigahertz and on the five gigahertz, it's on channel 153 and it will show us our utilization. In blue, we have our RX frames. In green, we have our TX frames and in yellow, we have our interference. And if it's a gray color, that means free. Under the overview, we could see our MAC address, our IP address, our model number, our CPU utilization, our uptime, our memory utilization, and the firmware. If we go to LAN, it will show us some statistics on the access points, the RX packets, the drops, the TX packets. Under uplink wired, it's gonna show us the device that we're uplinked to, and right now that's my TP-Link switch. It's gonna show us our duplex, and we're in full duplex. It will show us the negotiated speed, which is one gigabit per second, and it will show us our activity speed. If we click on radios, it's gonna show us some of the information for the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. If we go over to clients, it would show us our client list. Right now, we don't have anything connected. We click on mesh and right now it says, this AP is a wired AP currently. Um, we'll go deeper into this when I get another EAP 225. If we click under config, we could change the name. By default, it just shows you the MAC address. We had changed the LED settings. We're just gonna use the site settings. Under IP settings, we're using DHCP, but you could change this to static if you'd like. Under radios, we could change the channel width, the channel that we're on, and the power. It will show us our WLANs. Right now, we just have one called Chantel, and then the other one is called TP-Link. Under services, we could enable a management VLAN and SNMP. Under advanced, we could look at load balancing, so maximum associated clients, RRSI threshold and quality of service. In managed devices, we could do a custom upgrade. We can move it to a site if we have a different site. We could force a provision and we could forget the access point. In statistics, it's gonna show us our CPU memory monitor, and it will also show us our channel utilization as well as drop packets. 
So the last thing for us to do is to do a speed test. I'm gonna do a speed test on my PC right now, and this is pretty far away from the access point. The access point is in my backyard, and you can see in my system tray that we're only getting about one bar from the Wi-Fi. So I'll bring up speed test, and then we'll press go. And we're getting 39.69 megabits per second down and 5.68 up. The internet connection going into the TP-Link router is one gigabit by about 50 upload. So now I'm going to bring the camera outside and we'll do a speed test in the backyard to see if we get any better results. Now we're in the backyard. Let's do a speed test. The access point is right there. So I'm going to press go on my phone. And we're getting 81.9 megabits per second down and 52.6 up. So that's it for this access point. I think it's a pretty decent access point if you're just looking for some Wi-Fi coverage in your backyard. I was getting almost 100 megabits per second. Also, this access point is only $69.99 MSRP USD. So for the price point, it isn't bad. If you guys have any questions about this access point, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.